What's up, everyone? It's the OOTP GM. I want to welcome you to the 20th episode of my Detroit Tigers GM Let's Play here on Out of the Park Baseball 18. So we're here at the International Free Agent Signing Period, and before we get into that, I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on how things are going. So we've started to play better recently. We are now 10 games over 500. We've gone on a nice little winning streak here. Uh, things finally started to be playing into shape. We had an eight-game winning streak recently, and then we've uh, we've won, I believe, 11 of our last 12 overall. So that's gotten us to 10 games over 500, 45 and 35. And we are currently sitting four games up on the Cleveland Indians in the division now. You can see nine and one in our last 10 games. So things have gone a lot better recently. We're continuing to get good performances from a lot of our players. Bryce Harper continues to mash the ball for us. He is. Well on his way to having a uh, probably a MVP season. I can't imagine he who would be challenging him at this point. But Bryce Harper, Mike Trout kind of struggled at the beginning of the year, but he's really turned things around nicely. Cody Eves continues to play well. Uh, Vasquez continues to play really well, and Guerrero has played really well since we called him up in 23 games. He's hitting. He's got a 279, 309, 452 slash. So Guerrero's played really well since we called him up to start playing third base. I'm happy to see that. We've also, our pitching staff has continued to pitch pretty well. Sanchez's numbers have really started to come down. He's been pitching really well as of late. His ERA has dropped down to 3.91. Fulmer continues to be great. Boros has been up and down recently, but he's still pitching pretty well. Bueller we sent to the minors briefly, but we called him back up after he had like a .6 ERA in two starts. And then Slagers has actually pitched pretty well recently. His numbers don't show it, but he's actually pitched pretty well to bring his, his ERA down. And then we still have Fiedo down in the minors. And our bullpen continues to be great. You can see still first in ERA there. Uh, so with that out of the way, we'll head into the international uh, amateur screen here. And the only guy that I am considering signing this year, it, it, it's for the third straight year, I believe now, it is a very, very lean on international free agents. The only guy I'm considering signing is this Jorge Delgado. He's only one and a half stars. But he's asking for so little money that I figure it's not it won't hurt us for the investment. He's only asking for four hundred thousand. Now, obviously, to sign him, we're going to have to go over that. But I'm going to offer him to try and get him to sign immediately without having to get into a bidding war. I'm going to offer him a million dollars over that, so I'm going to offer him one point four million dollars and see if that gets him to sign. If it does, great. If it doesn't. You know, they're, they're, again, I'm not paying one-and-a-half-star players $3 million, $1.3 million, and one-star guys are not worth our time at all. So this is the only guy that we're going to target again this year. So it's a little disappointing that the international free agent market has been very thin the last few years. I'm kind of hoping that it will start to pick up again soon. But it does happen where there will be lean years, multiple years in a row. Uh, but we'll see what happens with Delgado. Uh, if he doesn't sign with us, we're not going to sign anybody again this year. Uh, so with that being said, I'm just going to go ahead and we did get all of our draft picks signed as well. Figured I'd show you that real quick. So all the guys that we are going to sign did sign with us. Remember, we're not signing Arturo because Arturo Cabrera because he wants too much money. He wants $4.8 million, which is over our draft budget in total, so we're not going to sign him. He's going to go back into the free agency or back into the draft pool for next year. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and move forward here. We'll see what Delgado um, see what Delgado thinks of our offer. You can see here real quick from the standings, Dodgers are just crushing it this year, 60-23. and 23. They are just absolutely blowing everybody out of the water at this point. So, But we'll see what happens here. We'll see if Delgado likes our offer or not. I want to just do a quick peek. And it looks like Arturo has suffered a day-to-day -day injury. Uh, is this moderate? Oh, it's minimal. So he'll be okay. So we can leave him there for the time being. We don't need to, we don't need to pull him out and put him on the disabled list. It's just a minimal injury. So I think he'll be fine. Uh, no need to pull him out. But we're still waiting for responses from uh, Delgado. So what I think I'm going to do here is I'm going to pause the video, and you can see we actually have won our la we've won two more games, so we're up to 47 and 35. I'm going to pause right here. I'll move forward to the 
uh, the announcement of the All-Star teams, and we'll see if Delgado signs with us or not, and I'll give you guys an update there. And I will see you guys at the announcement of the All-Star team. All right, guys, so we are here at the announcement of the All-Star teams, and there's a couple of things that I wanted to catch you up on real quick. So this piece of news right here is Bryce Harper hit his uh, 300th career home run. But I want to show you that uh, Delgado did sign that deal with us, so we got him in our organization. And then I also want to show you something here real quick that happened right below it. So this is what I was talking about with the computer making idiotic trades and why you want to set your trade difficulty to or your trade frequency to low for the computer. This is what I'm talking about. These are trades that I'm tempted to go in and change. You see the the Reds traded Joey Votto to Toronto for this 33-year-old two one and a half star pitcher. It's just a terrible awful trade and I know Votto is you know, in the twilight of his career, but, and he's got a lot of money left in his deal. And Toronto, you know, in terms of the team circumstances, you know, Toronto's trying to make the playoffs and Cincinnati is a bad team. But if you're going to trade Vada, you need to get more than a one and a half star pitcher for him. So this is what I'm talking about is that the computer will make a lot of really bad trades. And that's why you want to set your frequency to low, because if you don't, you'll see ungodly amounts of these. So, that's unfortunate when you see stuff like that. I want to just point that out to you real quick. And then we are going to get a third round pick next year because we did not sign Arturo Cabrera. And I'll go ahead and move up here real quick to the all-star rosters. So we have a few more all-stars this year than we've had in previous years. Uh, we have uh, Michael Fulmer, who made the all-star team. We have Joe Jimenez, who's having a kind of a breakout season in the bullpen for us, and A.J. Minter. Those two guys both made it, as did Drew Steckenrider as well. So Steckenrider having a really nice year as our closer. And then Cody Eves made the all-star team for the second straight year. And then Mike Trout and Bryce Harper made the all-star. So we have a lot of all-stars this year. So by my count, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So seven all-stars for us this year, which is a big leap forward from previous years when we've had one, maybe two at the most. So a really nice... We're being rewarded, you know, for the year that we're having. So it's nice to see us being represented uh, in the All-Star game. And we are continuing to play well, 49 and 37 at this point. I don't think I'm going to look to make any moves at the trade deadline. We we really don't need anything at this point. The only thing that we might need per se is a fifth, a reliable fifth starter. But like I said, we have Fiedo down in the minors right now. He's pitching decent in AAA. Uh, so we can always move players around if we need to, but we really don't need anything. Our team is just crushing it right now. We are just raking in terms of our offense, and our pitching staff is doing really well also. So uh, we really don't need anything at this point. I, I don't see where we need to make any sort of move. So we'll see what happens at when we get to the trade deadline, what our record is and how things are going. But at this point, I can't imagine us making a big move at the deadline uh, unless we have a big injury or something happens. So. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to move forward to the trade deadline, and we will see what happens when we get there. So I'll see you at the trade deadline. All right, so we are back here at the trade deadline, and after an unfortunate three-game losing streak to Cleveland, uh, things have gotten a little tight in the division over here. We were six games up on them, but then we lost three straight games against Cleveland, in part because we've uh, we've gotten some pretty poor pitching out of our four and five slots this year, and especially recently. So Bueller, it's a little bit disconcerting to me that Bueller has pitched so poorly with the way that his ratings are and just the fact that it's been two straight years now that he's pitched really poorly in the majors. So what I think I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to send Bueller back down to the minors and I'm going to bring Fiedo back up. Uh, I tried to do a bunch of different trades. I tried to to make a bunch of different moves and um, I just really did not... I did not find any sorts of trades for reliable starters uh, that I was comfortable with. I just did not find any moves that I was going to be comfortable making from guys that were in our system to try and make that, that kind of splashy deadline pickup, you know, somebody that can provide some stability to our, our pitching rotation. And unfortunately, I just didn't find any deals that I liked. I shopped a bunch of different guys around and... I just didn't see anybody. 
and we don't need any help in our lineup. Our lineup is set at this point. We are just, we're, I mean, we're one of the best teams, not only in the American League, but in baseball in terms of our offense. So we don't need any help there. And our bullpen continues to be one of the best in baseball, definitely the best in the American League, but one of the best in baseball. So we still don't, we don't really need any help there at this point. So uh, this is going to be a pretty bland trade deadline, unlike what we had last year when we made the big deal for Harper. We're not going to make any moves at the deadline this year. I'm going to stand pat, and we're going to see how things play out for the rest of the season. And uh, hopefully my next episode that I bring you guys will be uh, us in the ALDS. And that is my hope that that will be the next episode that I bring you guys. Uh, if if it gets down to the wire near the end of the season, and we need to win some games to like either get into the playoffs for whatever reason or something like that, like the division race gets tight at the end of the year with Cleveland, I might do an episode with that because uh, that would be meaningful games. I will play those games, and we'll see if we can we can get in in that regard. But at this point, I'm not planning to do any more episodes. I'm not planning to do another episode until we get to the postseason uh, or, heaven forbid, if we collapse at the end of the year, uh, the offseason episode. So... Uh, but at this point, I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here. I want to thank you for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe. Comments and feedback are always welcome. And I will see you all for the next episode of my Detroit Tigers GM Let's Play. Episode number 21.